Quest returns with two all-new quests in one massive Kickstarter. As a respected member of society, Count Mortis walked too close to the darkness and now lives off the life force he drains from the citizens of the Ebonwood, a pocket dimension shrouded in perpetual twilight. <laughs> You must recruit a new band of heroes to protect the citizens from the Count's dark minions. You may be tempted to touch the darkness yourself, but be wary. That power comes at a high cost. <laughs> Once a lowly peasant, Miracel returns to Thunderstone Keep as a powerful wizard, and with her, an army of bitter scions. Having lost the hope of creating their own world, these scions are determined to claim ours. Miracel has also placed many of Thunderstone's greatest heroes under her control, making a mockery of their past deeds. It's up to a ragtag group of outcasts to defeat Miracel and her minions in the epic conclusion of the Miracel story arc. A quest that will put your deck building skills to the test. Thunderstone Quest is Mike Elliott's award winning deck building game of adventure and dungeon diving. If you're new to Thunderstone Quest, start by backing at the value pack champion level, which includes everything listed here. If you're already a fan, pick up the new quests and continue your adventure. Thunderstone Quest, now. Hello, my fellow beach bums, and welcome to a, another day of Santa Monica, our 11th game of Santa Monica. Um, it, it's going to be a good one, because you know what? They're all, all good ones. Um, I am joined by some uh, fellow AG people uh, on tech. You know, of course, we have Vladimir Oriana. Hello. Uh, we have um, our head of sales. We have Kyle Nunn. How's it going, everybody? The developer of Santa Monica, um, John Goodenough. Hey, everybody. And I'm, of course, the designer of Santa Monica, Josh Wood. Um, welcome so much. Um, we got a pretty fun setup. I'm actually really, I actually really like the way that this one works, uh, looks. Um, 
Uh, so in the in the top row, we have the card 34, Scoopsy Daisies 57, the Turf 38, card 72, Bunions 49, another surfing card 26, the Raccoon card 52, and the Volleyball card card number 30. We're using the sand dollar that you can pay to to take a tourist or a local from anywhere. And then um, the kind of everyone's favorite, the one where you can pay three and take a card directly from the back. Um, we're gonna, and we're playing with the blue towel. Just choose a random starting uh, location and get that all set up. And um, while we're doing that, Vlad, do you wanna say hi to the people? I will say hi to the people today on the stream. We have Richard Gans, Ryan Mose, Christine Hale, David Bauer, Krista Jones, Amy Kaiser, Joseph Manley, Paul Johnston, Bill Kennedy, Eric Ortega, Alice Wood, Kevin Renown, Luke Seegers, Sherry Drefke, Lubin Perez, Leslie Clixby, Anne Berlin, Richie Yang, Paul Johnston, and Alison Parkland. Welcome to a new game of Santa Monica. And remember, you can join our daily week giveaway to win a copy of Point Salad by liking and sharing the stream on your timeline. Also, we are doing a special contest today. We're going to pop up a question at random during the chat. And if you answer correctly, you can be selected to win a copy of Calico. And that's it. That uh, I don't see. I, I I don't believe that I had missed anyone. So I think it's time for Josh to start this game of Santa Monica. Kaka! Alrighty. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, I'm ready for my first turn. I am going to take bunions for my first turn. I think that that is the. Um. I won't say that's the, the correct move for me, but I think that that is that's you know, what I'm, I'd like. I, I actually have my heart set on that too. Um, I'm playing the post office, so it does oh. over overlap on some of the icons, but I wanted to take, it's one of my favorite cards of the game just because the the Paul Bunyan reference. Oh, but, Bunyan's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Paul Bunyan's pretty, I was actually Paul Bunyan for Halloween last year. It's, there's a, ginormous Paul Bunyan and Babe uh, like sculpture yeah. thing uh, in was that B Paul, Bemidji? Right? I think it's Bemidji. I, I mean Paul uh, Bunyan's pretty pretty big in Minnesota. But <laughs> one thing I did one thing I always wondered though is I mean when I zoom in it looks like they're winter coats, like like full quotes. How much business would a store like that actually do in California? Do you, yeah. do you guys actually Which buy store? coats there? The so, so bunions does have it does have like winter coats it's it's a it's a good catch you know this is something that that um jeremy and i talked about when, when we were doing this where you know he he has like this thing where he loves drawing winter clothes and he's like and he started drawing jackets and like we i think we talked about it and he's like and i said you know it's funny how how many times you can still buy puffy jackets in la but no one buys them but yes, Bunny is supposed to be just like a general outdoor store. There's, you know, you can buy surfboards or hockey gear. It's kind of like an REI or a, um, um, you yeah, know, one of those like or, outdoor places. Yeah. But but yeah, you can always buy those things like that. Yeah. Um, oh, Sherry asks, will Santa Monica and Cat Lady Premium be back in stock in your website soon? So Cat Lady Premium will not be back in stock on, on our website in, in the near future there are talks that we won't even reprint that so um i would say if you can find a copy out in the wild i would say snag it up um Ooh, i mean collector's item yeah I, I mean look i i was thinking about making a different i i i had this idea i mean like i don't have to talk to ag about this but like you know about doing a, a reprint of of the premium but so far we're talking about not doing that santa monica uh, Kyle, do you know the information on that? I know we're supposed to get some more, but I don't quite remember when we're when they're that's coming. Happening. Uh, yeah, I, that's. Wait one second. But that's why we have the director of sales with us to help us answer those questions that we really don't know. I should exactly. But I didn't. <laughs> 
Yeah, Bunyan's Bunyan's is one of my favorite. It is is well, I'd say all of them are my favorite. But that, you know, that was an interesting one because we also want to make a black building, but it has that perfect California look where it's black, but it's also kind of like, you know, in the bright sun, so it doesn't quite look that way. Um, let's take Oscar's first turn. Speaking of uh, of animals, yeah, I'll finish uh, card, looking this up after that. Card two is taken. Card two. But no, I wanted to. I know. I kind of wanted to as well, but okay. Card one will be fine for me. Going for uh, the double waves. Yep. Yep. So I've got the villas, uh, and then I did bunions. So putting the villas in, or uh, putting the that on top of the bunions is going to start my wave and give me two points. Yeah. Right now we have a pool on the chat. You can vote for either Team Oscar. And Carlos or Team AG, who do you think is gonna win? Oh, everyone! Everyone's gonna want Oscar, our residency goal to win. Everyone's gonna want that. All right, so I'm on my second turn, and I am taking that double wave. That double wave is so hard to pass up when um, um, uh, uh, sorry, when the blue towel is in. I'm pointing the wrong thing. Um, by the way, if you're following along. Directly, card 74, if vicious were dishes popped up, and um, then card 14, and then now card 17, which card 17 is pretty uh, pretty good. All right, so Santa Monica. Uh, Santa Monica is, it's a bit out. It's far enough out that I don't have a good date for you. Okay. Um, which uh, this would be a Dave question more than a Kyle question. This is why I told them to print a million copies because that way we wouldn't be. Out. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing end of year. No, I'm sorry. It'll be Q1. It'll be effectively Q1. <laughs> All right. I hope I'm wrong, but if I'm reading the sheet correctly, it'll be Q1. Looks like you might need to go to your friendly local game store. All right, let's let's see Oscar second turn. Let's see what's going on here. All right, take us from where the foodie is. Oh, remind me what the foodie does. The foodie allows you to move a person one space. The easy way to remember is that the person allows you to move first. there we go one million copies in print says Andy Bet. wow okay. imagine that we can sell one million copies of Santa Monica I um it would it be a good day I, it I would be a I good day I would love to sell a million copies of the game, but I do not, you know. Oh. Well, but that sounds like video games numbers, right? I mean, look, there, there are, numbers. yeah, Ticket to Ride <laughs> has sold eight, eight million, right? I bet Pandemic has probably hit a million now. Catan has hit several million. In fact, Catan's probably at, you know, 10 plus, right? Yeah. Um, I, I believe I have around three copies of Catan. No, I already gave a, one out, so it's only two left. So I, I'm more than sure that you have sold 10 million copies of Catan. All right, my third turn. What am I doing for my third turn? I think I'm gonna... SJ Games boasts 250,000 car wars. Interesting. It's a lot. Yeah, to yeah I, I, I wonder if they count all print runs. 
because that game's been in print like it seems like forever yeah most of those stats count all print runs and they count uh all foreign language as well uh, mm -hmm. all licensed copies i mean if you had a, a game that sold fairly consistently for a couple of decades um yeah that number would be pretty impressive but yeah was it was it car wars or was it ogre that they did that ginormous huge box Ogre. Yeah, so Ogre was the ginormous box, and then they also did the the tiny version of Ogre, which I, I feel like no one was buying that one other than random people who were big fans of the game, right? Um, yeah. Star Wars has been around since the 80s. Yeah, exactly. Um, Let's get alrighty. rolling. It's good. It's yeah, good what, Oscar. What? Oscar for, for his third turn. Takes from the meeple. Again, that's the turf. I, You know, I really wanted that card. I was kind of hoping it would stick around for one turn. That's kind of what I wanted. This gives me interesting choices. Yeah, of course, it's a print runner for over 40 years. Like, I know what we sell of our games, and, you know, like, it doesn't surprise me if it's able to stay in print that long that they can do that. But yeah, Richard Gantz says 32 million copies of Catan, according to a quick. Google search. Yeah. Yeah, that's that is crazy. I think one of the most impressive Catan thing that that I've ever seen, the the time I went to Essen, they had the Catan tournament. And it was this huge like auditorium filled with uh it kind of looked like like round dinner tables um filled with Catan games. I mean, every time they host that tournament, they go through probably a couple hundred games just doing a tournament there. But it was impressive, just the amount of people that were in that event. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's it's crazy that that happens. And oh, yeah. Um, OK, so for my fourth turn, I'm going to take this card. Uh, that allows just me to person. Just curious, are you guys doing the uh, the the wave scoring card? I'm wondering how much in sync we are with starting to deviate strategies. You know, I'm not doing that strategy. I, you know, it's so good for this setup too because you get reward for your long wave group. I've already stopped my wave group. I'm just doing those two waves. If I get the opportunity to build another one, maybe I will just make that my big one. But. I'm going a little bit more for just some of these sports balls. And then I'm going to start trying to create another little chain coming off the, the left side of my board now. And I just got to kind of, a couple of my plans, my early plans got a little bit ruined by the fact that um, I wasn't able to get the, um, the locals off of the turf like I thought I was going to be able to. I thought I could let it sit for one term, but <sighs> that is the trouble with Carlos, um, or Oscar, rather. <laughs> sneaky Oscar. Sneaky Oscar. Speaking of that sneaky Oscar, it's time for his fourth turn. Okay. Card number two, which is what I was going to take, because that also gives two locals and I already had that chain complete. Uh, wow. Oscar just is mad today. Well, people are cheering, is cheering for Oscar. <laughs> so how do you think you guys did? Like how many points for team, how many, how, how much percentage for team AG and how much for team Oscar? I, I, I don't know. Guess, 
Yeah, I, I'd almost not say 100 to zero, but but I, I will say 90 to 10 percent, right? Like, Kyle, I think it's 75 percent Oscar. Gooley, I don't know. I'm on team AEG and I'm rooting for Oscar, so I'll, I'll go for like 90 10. <laughs> 57 to Every, 43. Oh, wow, that was a lot closer than I thought. Yeah, oh, some people, some people are very uh, are on our side. That That's very, that's very nice. Um, all right, so it is time for our fifth turn. What am I doing for my fifth turn? You know, this seems nice to me. Um, cause I need, yeah, I need those locals. I'm going to need those locals. I had to surf shop and 32 just... millions of cuttants. <laughs> yeah. And Yvette That's... says that we should throw some fries to Oscar. I mean, he's not wrong. Amy Kaiser is saying that we need to give Oscar a Halloween hat. <laughs> oh, I'm betting that Oscar doesn't snap snack up at the this bottom the street level sports. Like I'm setting myself in a position where if that cornerstone gets taken then going to break up a good chain. Okay. Sorry, I had uh, do a bunch of shenanigans on my board. Pierre came out. That's that's fun. Camouflage just came out. Card 20. What, what did you just do, Vlad? I was trying to move the table because I'm, I'm lagging a little bit I think it was like this, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Vlad. What? He just messed up all the cards. Yay, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it was Oscar. Uh, we, we know someone who's on Team Oscar. <laughs> all right, speaking of Team Oscar. Uh, there you go. Card two. Um, only rolling twos and fives today. Um, that two is not terrible. I'm okay with that one. <laughs> I think. Um, oh man, all the pieces are all disheveled. Come on, man. Chaos. Chaos. Okay. It's not allowing you to draw offline? Well. Yeah, it does look like a it does look like a um like a dunce cap. You gotta give Oscar like a you know. No, oh, I can't even draw on Oscar. I wonder why that is. I don't understand this program. It is not it is not robust like you might think it would be. Hey Kyle, are you gonna try for the statue this game or no. No. <laughs> no. Uh not again. Uh got it on sheer accident last time. I love the statue. It's it's one of my favorite cards because it's so rewarding when you get it. You just feel like you won, whether you win or not. So you just go, I did it. Perfect. Oh, it's I, certainly, yeah, it, it's definitely like a mini victory, right? It's, yeah. I could have scored yeah. it if I had pulled it uh, the turn before last, uh, but now it's just looking really rough. Okay, I am going to... I'm going to take the wedding because I think I'm just going to need people and especially tourists and I mean, especially locals and there's two locals on there. So I think I'm going to take the wedding card. Ooh, Deep Blue Tease comes out. Card 65. Uh, 
Love it. Does, uh, do you have games that you didn't like and give a second chance to play again? I mean, that definitely has happened. Um, I can't think of any good examples. I have to sort of, I, I mean, there's so many games I do like, it's hard for me to want to give a game a second chance, but it definitely happens. It definitely happens. Uh, card number four is taken by Oscar, card number four. That was a little painful. Yeah, that would have, yeah, that breaks up the, the sports strategy, but. It opens up the sports strategy for me. Uh, I wonder when we're going to start actually seeing some some locals popping up here. <laughs> that's part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's that's how I feel. I I need kind of I need a lot of people, so I'm a uh, a little worried to be honest. Okay, I think I have to start my my right side of my board now. So I might You know, maybe I will try to do the waves. You know, maybe I will try to do that wave scoring. See see if I like can buy myself a little time with that. Um It's also good just cuz I'll get to move someone face. So. Okay, Ooh, that's a good card. I want that card. Um, all right, that was our seventh card. So Oscar's seventh card coming up. All right, flying by today. Oscar seventh card. Card number four. I can accept that. That was good. Oscar <laughs> Kurt ruined me I, by going foodie. He just, uh, just deleted my little, my nice little lines that I had around all the cards. Now, how am I going to know? You will never know. Louis is saying, do you have a, ga a game you didn't like and give a second chance? And the chat is saying, Love Leather, Sheriff of Nottingham, Sushi Go, um, Parks. What That's about you guys? Part. Do you have a game that you gave a second chance and you like them better after the second one? Yeah, I, I can't think of anything that really jumps to mind. For, for me, it was the actually. It's funny that you said that because for me, it was the mind. Um, uh, I, I love that uh, game. So the second I played, oh, I will say yeah. that my first game of it didn't go well. But like, I could kind of tell though. I was like, I'm not playing with the right people. But, and then yeah, I, it, I think I especially got the right people, and it was like, and I was like, great. And now I know who I need to play that game with and who not to play that. And game. I, I think that's the thing is, it's not so much the game; it's the people. Like. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that can be a phenomenal game with the right people, and fall apart with the wrong group. I my first experience with the mind was at Gen Con with a group of uh, people from another company, uh, play using it as a drinking game. Ooh. You didn't, did 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 you not did you, like? Because I remember I I think I introduced that game to Z right before Gen Con. And he was like so obsessed that he was just like randomly like just, we would just every meeting we would just play like I remember after AG's big game night he was like all right who's staying around to play like some mind and it's like um, we just had like a huge like like four hour gaming session like it's time to go to bed and he's like nope the mind come on you know hey guys I was sorry. not with the company at the time. Sorry for interrupt uh, you, but it's turn number seven, so it's time to talk about Thunderstone Quest, and Gold is going to help us talking about that. Oh, uh, yeah, I can kick it off. Um, so the exciting news is the Thunderstone campaign on Kickstarter is uh, is uh, it's going to be ending on Friday. 
So if you want to check out the Enemies Among Us, it's going to be a big box, contain a lot of awesome stuff, um, including uh, Quest 10 Darkness Rising and Quest 11 Mirror Cells Return. And if you are falling behind and you want to catch up with any of the other Thunderstone releases, uh, you can uh, get them on the Kickstarter as well. Uh, but just make sure that you check it out because uh, it ends on Friday. So it's going to be wrapping up pretty, pretty quickly. And it funded in 45 minutes. So it's, it's awesome to see Thunderstone um, still have such a tremendous fan base all these years. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. Thank you, Gully. Let's yeah. keep moving, Josh. All right. I'm going to go to, I'm going to grab this card, I believe. I'm going to do that. That feels like a, oops, I'm doing, see, without my lines, I'm going to make all these mistakes. Mm -hmm. All right, Oscar's eighth turn. Oscar takes card number one. Ooh, there goes my locals. That was pretty good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I have five activity rings and one single local so far. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got a lot of rings to fill. I have four, so I feel your pain. <laughs> yeah. Leslie says I was partially like that with Wingspan, but I but I think it was partly due to all the hype. After a few plays, we loved it. Omar says, so late. Hello, everyone. That's okay. Achoo! We're happier. Oh, sorry. Um, all right. I am going to take this card. All right, that's it my card. The choices were so obvious when before that uh, those condos got s sniped by Oscar. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go for the for the statue. We'll see if we can pull this off here. I don't have a ton of awesome choices, so I'm just gonna. It feels like pulling hail mary. We'll see. It's okay. That is okay. Omar says, too busy with work today. Time got away from me. That's true. Um, is this or will there be a solo variant for Santa Monica, says Ricky? Yes, there is a solo variant that I posted on boardgamegeek.com. And this is basically what we're playing with, is sort of the solo. Um, it was pretty easy to adapt once I created the solo mode. And um, yeah, you can look up the full rules um, for that online. We should put that on our website too. I don't know what we're thinking. All right. Oscar's ninth turn coming up. Card three. Card three. I'm okay with that. I'm okay. Oh man. I want that card as well. I feel like like a lot of really good cards have come up, but they've kind of come up in like a little bit of the wrong order. So, well, I just got tourists, so that's nice. So my question is, how many unplaced people everyone's gonna have? Because do I want to take the minus four and take and take the peer? That will add four points to my wave group. So there's a good chance that if I don't, if I somehow get out of that hole, I will be doing really well. But if I don't, then I will, it will be bad. So I'm going to take that risk and I'm going to take the Santa Monica Pier. So the Calico question was just posted. Make sure you answer. And if you answer correctly, you will be you might be choose at random to win a copy of Calico.
Okay, so that was my 10th turn, I think, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yep. Good thing we we're not playing with the even beach scoring objective because my beaches are very irregular today. Very irregular. Um, <clears throat> Let's see how many in the company know the answer. And you just have to answer with yes or no. Josh, do you know the answer to the name of the Calico promo cut? Um, there's a couple, aren't there? Just one. What? There's a couple. There's, I mean, it's at least two, right? Because they're double-sided. No. Kyle. Not a clue. Jungle. I think I know. I think I know what maybe it could be, but there's a couple ones that were in the Kickstarter, right? So. Oh man, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I built a t tabletop simulator, and so I should. It's, know it's this. the same cat, and yes, there are two answers for that cat, correct? And um, it can be either of those answers. Okay. okay, and then I, I know then. Yeah. Yeah, I don't Feather know. Either no both. Head. Uh, Carly misses Oscar the question. The question is on Facebook and it's asking name is the it Millie? Nope. Hey, don't answer. Oh, oh Paul oh. Johnson, is that a Kickstarter promo <laughs> cut? Yes, it was a Kickstarter promo cut. Okay. Um, and we right. have Oscar seven took... correct answers right now. Oscar took what? Um, some people say that the question is not popping up for them. It's not mine. Um, hmm. uh, which Why one could that did Oscar be take? Card three. Ah. Which means that this is probably moved. Oscar actually did me a favor with that. So Sometimes Oscar, you know, yeah. does you yeah. a solid, you know? Yeah, we're still friends. <laughs> okay. I think I'm going to use the opportunity to. Hmm. Okay. We're about to start our 10th turn. I wanted to ask a hypothetical question to everyone today. Are you, are you ready for a hypothetical question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the hypothetical question is, for whatever reason, two unauthorized movies are made about your life. The first is an independently released documentary, primarily comp comprised of interviews with people you know um, and bootleg footage of your actual life. Critics are describing the documentary as brutally honest and relentlessly fair. Meanwhile, Columbia TriStar has produced a big budget biopic of your life, casting major Hollywood stars as you and all your acquaintances. Though the movie is based on actual events, screenwriters have definitely taken liberties with some of the facts. Critics are split on the artistic merits of this fictionalized account, but audiences love it. Which film would you be more interested in seeing? I will see both, Josh. There are two movies about no, you me. you can only see one. You can only see one. That's how hypotheticals work. <laughs> it's a choice. I lived my actual life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go watch the high budget film to see what they did. I want to see myself <laughs> in Hollywood. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good answer. Yep. I go with Kyle. Kyle wins. Yeah. And what was yeah, your I mean, answer I mean, to that question? Like, well, what would they change, right? You know? Chris says Hollywood baby. Yeah, Amy says big budget. Well, the humor will that make one. sense. That's going to be one of the big difference. All right, I am going to. Do some a little bit of moving. Perfect. Sorry, I took a card from the back, so I had to move some people. All right, that was my 10th turn, I think. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That was my eleventh turn. Right? Ooh, and we have a oh, winner wait. for the Calico question. Remember that Calico is out on your local game store. Go check it out and wait. Should I tell them to go to our online store? <laughs> or it's too late for that, Kyle? Yeah, we're sold out. Um, we are almost sold out. Oh. Uh, if you cannot find it at your friendly local game store, you might be able to get a copy out of our online store. But do not wait. Supplies are limited. Yeah, like like uh, I still need to send some copies to content creators, and I'm afraid I will not be able to. So, yep. Get them from your local friend, local friendly game store, and if it can happen, go fast and check out with our site. But we cannot guarantee that there are still more copies of Calico out. Um. Okay. So Oscar needs his eleventh turn. Card four is taken by Oscar, and that makes sense, but I am not happy about it. Because point-wise, that's pretty good for, for Oscar. Um, all righty. Oh, the pool is... Yeah, sorry, guys. I just keep the pool open for a little while and then it goes away. We're going to try to figure out a better way to do this, so we're still trying new ways to do it. Ooh, beach wedding just came up. It's close. Yeah. So, you know you know what? I'm going to open it. I'm, gonna, I'm going to open the question again for a couple of minutes. Let me see if you can get them. People are texting me like crazy right now. Yeah, yeah, you you should begin the question open again in your screen right now. Chris says, I like that you're picking from all the correct answers now. Yeah, that was your feedback, guys. <laughs> I mean, you guys told us that that was the best way to do it because the different times with the streaming, and we're just trying to support what you prefer. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is... Awesome. This Good is to know, three guys. Three points to me. This is four points, huh, but that weird. could give me a lot of negative points david try to close that question try to close the pool first and then it should probably show you the question i'm going to take i think i'm going to take this card for my for my turn i think that that's i'm going to keep it open for the next two minutes then i'm going to close it and open it again for another two minutes and then we're done for the day with that question oh it sounds very Fancy, you're like, I'm going to open it, then close it, then open it. Then well, is that it, some people are not seeing it, so I'm trying to make Facebook show it. Got it. It sounds like a dance, uh, right? Open it and close it, open it and close it. Ooh, all right, ooh, ooh. it's time for Oscar's 12th turn. Card number two for Oscar. Card number two. It's a pretty good one for Oscar. Hmm. I like this way of asking the question. Also means people have to watch the whole stream. Well, hopefully people don't just bail. Hopefully you guys aren't just here for the prizes. Well, I'm glad there's not a penalty for unfilled rings in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I thought that would be too brutal if it was like both of those things, you know, so that is definitely a decision that was made. Um, all right. 
I think since it is, since it is my 13th turn, You know, this card is pretty good. Awesome. If I good could to know, David. do something like this. Hmm. Ah, Omar, we're not using first two answers. Right now what we're doing is we are selecting every correct answer and then between everyone that co guessed it correctly, we're choosing a random winner. That way everyone gets a chance. I think I'm going to take this card and then hope fortune smiles on me. Or am I going to just take this card and... Fortune smiles on the humble man, Josh. I think I'm going to take... Oh, but if I do that... Oh, wait. Oh, but I could put it there, and then that would be the same effect, too. Oh, but if I do that... I see. Um... Huh. Is my goal to do that or that? If I do this, that might get me like four points. If I do this, I might get five points. I think I'm going to play big and go for this. I think that that's the, I think that's the smart play. All right. Jeremy says, Sam Monk looks interesting. I've not seen it before. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, it's a little tableau builder where you build a city and oh. you have 14 turns to, to make the best city you can. All right, let's see what Oscar takes for their 13th turn. Ugh, the card I wanted gets taken, but it doesn't necessarily hurt me because I can now take this card, which just doesn't do a lot for me, but will help me maybe complete some stuff. Yes, Josh, hard. but what card was it? <laughs> Yeah, it, it was where the food truck was. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. So, uh, sometimes I just I just think that that people can't see it. Richard Gann says, any update on the expansion? Uh, no, I have some other things that. I mean, I there's something else that I'm wanting to try now. Uh, you know, I sometimes I, so I get really excited about making expansions for games, but then I also really want to like focus on them and make sure they're like the best they can be. And so I kind of sometimes go back and forth on some things. I go, ooh, but what if I did this? And that will make that a little bit better or whatever. And so, um, you know, I'm kind of in that phase right now. Um, all right, this is where I am going to say that I think that this is relatively good for me. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this into play. And I get to move uh, two people, one space. I will move one person here. And I will move one person here. Perfect. All right, not bad. OK. And that's that's my game. And then Oscar is gonna finish up by taking great the card that really helps them. I tell you, Oscar gets so many good cards on like his last turn. Oh right, uh, Oscar took the um, the foodie for Ooh. his last. Turn. That's yeah. not. I think I missed it. I, I missed the clue. So, Kyle, it was it, it's time to talk about the online store special that we have right now. Yes, it is, and I don't want to misquote it. 
and I have it pulled up, but Firefox has determined that I don't need to see it right now. So give me one second. Sure. And if you were here yesterday, you already know about it, but we're just going to make sure that you get all the cool info. And then we're going to have to sort out who has the most leftover meeples to <clears throat> All right. I have, I have a stranded to uh, local, so I just one. I think I'm at. I think I got down to one as well. So with the promo code trick or treat in Barano, as long as you spend thirty dollars on our online store, you will get a free copy of Barano Walking in Barano. So what's the code again? Trick or treat in Barano. That is a that is a very good game. Thank you, Kyle. You're and welcome. all for the low, low price of free. I have one tourist just chilling out at this Santa Monica Pier. So I have actually no unplaced meeples. Oof. Ooh. Yikes. Um, that's good. That means that um, Oscar has two unplaced people. So Goody and I receive minus two and um, Oscar gets minus four. How can Oscar have two unplaced meeples? He never has unplaced meeples. Uh, he's got two. I don't know how to tell you other than I, I designed the game and I know how many unplaced people he has. <laughs> Great answer, Josh. It, it, it's it's part of the solo rules. There's just like there's just like a couple of charts, and I just sure sort of figured stuff out. But um, yes. <laughs> Josh, can you remind me how to score card seventeen? Kyle, Jen Lee is asking: Is that code K sensitive? It should not be. Um, remind me what card seventeen is. <laughs> Um, it's the three waves colon wave times points. Yes. So if, as long as you have three waves together, you'll get one point for every wave that is in that grouping of waves. That's what I thought. It's just really relevant this time around. Josh, you are scoring for, uh, Oscar. I am still scoring for Oscar right now. Okay. And Oscar. You know, Oscar. One million points for Oscar. No? Uh, okay, so Oscar gets. 29, 34, 48, 52, 60, 56. 56 is its normal score. Yeah. Good score. One, two, three, four, five. 61 is its hard score. Mm -hmm. And its easy score today is. Is 51, I believe. All right. Can you explain the difference between the scores, Josh? Yeah, so you, so you have the scores, you get the normal score. Um, the hard score, they get an extra point for every footprint token they got. They get footprint tokens any single time they take where the um, uh, foodie is. Um, and then the way you do their easy score is you just remove this card that scores the best for them. And so it's up to you, it's up to, you to kind of figure that out. And I think two, three, four, Four, oh, actually, that one's a little bit better. So seven. So forty-nine is the is the easy score. Forty-nine. Forty-nine. And on my side. All right. And while you're scoring, I'm gonna show everyone the winners of the day. That seems good. And the winners are. Chris Okelberg wins the share and like price of a copy of Point Salad. 
And Chris Asaki answered correctly the Calico question. So please send us a message on Facebook so we can send you your games. Thank you so much for playing with us. So how, how'd you do, Kyle? I got 60, um, which I, yeah, I was able to pull off the, the statue, but I had to kind of sacrifice and use two cards that wouldn't otherwise score. It was just used to score the, the statue. Yeah. <laughs> I am still scoring. I feel like I had a really good game today. Huh. Yeah, my sports icons alone, uh, combined with the, the beach towel and everything, like just the yellow with the sports ball um, was worth 20 points. So that was... In hindsight, if I would have connected a little bit more, I could have actually gotten more points than that. But um, oops. and all right, I'm just going to get a calculator out. Mm -hmm. It's 65 points. Oof. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I scored 16 points on activity rings, which nice. was salvaged at the very end of the game by Beach Wedding coming out. And it was basically the Beach Wedding came down on the top, and there were activity rings on both sides of it. Uh, yeah. But I, the, ca the Camel Lodge um, saved me. I was able to. Let's see. That was the other side of the board. <laughs> I, I was able to, to fill three out of my eight activity 73. rings. <laughs> so, 73? Uh, scored 70. nine points on VIP. Uh, I scored six uh, points on my top, but I scored 17 points on my bottom cards. 75. Yep, 73 is what I got Good today. Good score, so 73, Josh. 73, nice. 73 with zero sand dollars. Oh, awesome. Make that 66 out of sand dollar. <laughs> wow. I, um, yeah, I, I actually got 21 points on my activity rings. I, I, that, that little last minute gamble was pretty good because that kept me from getting minus four and it got me additional five. So that's seven points by, by going big. Um, and so that, that worked out well for me. And then my VIPs got me 10 points today, which is, very strong, very strong um, game. I'm glad that I also did the, I'm glad I did the Santa Monica Pier. There was a couple things that, you know, are kind of risky to do, like taking the Santa Monica Pier if you're not ready for it, but that added to my wave group, which just ended up being four long, which is really good. Um, and that, that worked out pretty well for me today. Um, all righty. Well, to all the people who wanted Team AG to win today, thank you. For the people who wanted Oscar to win, you know. Sometimes so your dreams cannot happen. Yeah. Uh, he, I think Oscar took enough good tiles where even if he didn't win, he's he's got a smug look of victory on his face, right? Yeah. Oh, that is <laughs> yeah. I mean, look. To be fair, the thing I like the most about about Oscar is that um, you know, win or lose, he you know, he was just glad that he got to eat some French fries and just kind of hang out. And um, you know, at the end of the day, he's just happy because he's a seagull who gets to play a board game. Yeah. Um, everyone, I I I always have a good time being able to play board games with you. And um, you know, join us again um, next week for Santa Monica and. Uh, join us tomorrow for Tiny Towns again. Yeah, um, and on Friday for Space Base, as you were asking. Yes, and so um, I, is there anything else that we need to talk about? Uh, Essen is coming. We're going to announce a bunch of games for Essen. We're going to tell you about what's coming on 2021. Then we're going to have Cat Lady next week. So next Thursday, Woo! we're playing Señora de los Gatos. So play with us. Awesome. Sounds great. All right, everyone. Thank you again. Um, and see you tomorrow. Stay safe. Wear your masks. And um, have a great rest of your day. All right. See you, everyone. Everybody. Thank you for playing Thanks, with everybody. us. Goodbye.